Saving the ball is the one skill that every Rocket League player has to learn. It can save you goals and also save you games. And yet so many people screw it up. Why? Well today we're going to answer that question as well as going through the steps involved in actually being able to save the ball properly, the mechanics needed to save the ball properly, as well as how and when you should save the ball. This is how to save the ball in Rocket League. Whenever I ask people what's the most important part of a save, I always get responses like positioning, your mechanics, how you jump for the ball, how you cover the net, and all of these are actually wrong. And the reason they're wrong is because you actually want to stop the save from ever happening in the first place. We call this prevention, and essentially this is the first step in how to save the ball. Prevention involves getting the opponents to start their attack before they actually should. There are two key ways of doing this. The first way is by using fake challenges. Fake challenges essentially involve you veering towards the opponent to make it look like you're about to challenge before veering back towards the net. This tricks the opponent into giving up the ball, allowing you to collect it without actually having to save it. The key with the fake challenge is to make it as convincing as possible, but not necessarily put yourself out of position. The second way to prevent a save is to challenge early. This will only work if you and your teammate are both back. If you are a first man in this position, you want to try and challenge the opponent as quickly as possible to force the opponent away from the goal. It is not necessarily important for you to hit the ball, although that would be preferable, but essentially by doing this, you're forcing your opponent away from the goal and making the save easier for your teammate. The most important aspect of this is just simply to get the opponent to do something and to do it early. These strategies are highly effective in preventing the need to save it, but sometimes these don't work, which is when the next step in saving the ball comes in. So now that you know that you have to save a ball, how do you set up for the save itself? Well, this relies a lot on how you position your car before the save. The most well documented way to do this is to position your car at what's called the back post. Basically, the back post is the post furthest away from the ball. This allows your car to be able to cover the entire net as opposed to when you're sitting in the middle where there's a possibility it can be hit behind you. This is simply to make the save easier because your car can cover the whole net. What most people don't tell you about rotating back post is that you have to rotate away from the ball. So if the ball is on the right side of the field, you want to be rotating to the left so that you can sweep around and actually cover the back post. If you rotate on the same side as the ball, then you can't possibly cover the back post and you will have to do a harder backward save. But Moldy, what if the opponent's in the air? Well, the best way to defend aerial attacks is by sitting on the backboard. Sitting on the backboard is easily the best way to defend aerial attacks because it stops them using the backboard as a way to score. It also positions your car so that you're at a similar height to the opponent. So if you see your opponent go up for an air dribble, let's say, go to the backboard. Whether it's on the ground or on the air, the setup is going to be key to how you save the ball. Now, let's talk about the save itself. Saving the ball is a highly situational thing. We're going to break this down into three sections. The takeoff, the hit, and the direction. Let's begin with the takeoff. The first part of a takeoff is whether you are accelerating or braking right before you take off. If the ball is being shot far away from you on the other side of the net, then you will want to accelerate before you jump because you are wanting to build up momentum so that you can reach the ball. But if the ball is being shot above you or behind you, then you will want to brake so that it is easier to aerial upwards towards the ball. This small little detail is the reason why 90% of people screw up their save, so don't undervalue this part of your save. Next is the hit itself. A good hit on the ball requires you to get your nose to face towards the direction you want the ball to go. And if you can, to utilize your flip to put it in that direction. I go through the technique needed to do this in a previous video, so I would highly recommend checking that out. But a general tip is to ensure that you have enough space between you and the ball so you can actually hit the ball with power. The final part of a save is the direction in which you hit it. A save is no good if you end up hitting it back into the opponent, so what you want to do is to aim the hit away from them. 
A good way to do this is to hit it to either side of your goal in the corners. The reason for this is that your teammates are generally positioned here since they will most likely be getting boost. If you are low on boost, I would highly recommend clearing it far and long just to buy time. But in essence, you just don't want to hit it towards the opponents because this stops any chance of them shooting again and you needing to save it. All three parts of a save are crucial to whether you succeed or not, so make sure to keep all of these in mind when going for a save. So now you've saved the ball, and that means it's done, right? Wrong. And that's where the next part comes in. Saving the ball doesn't stop when you hit the ball out of the goal. You have to be able to recover from your save. This involves how you are able to land and then drive so you can complete the next play. The key ways of doing this are using air roll to readjust your car so it lands nicely, as well as power slide to keep momentum if you need it. It's also extremely helpful to think about using walls, such as the inside of your goal and the side walls, as ways of being able to recover. This helps you get back into a better position as well as possibly allowing you to contest the ball. So in the future, try and think about how you're going to recover whilst doing the save. Once you have recovered from a save, it's actually not over yet. In fact, if the opposition has possession, what you need to do is to go through all the previous steps discussed in this video. So instead of rotating for boost and assuming that everything's going to be okay, go through the steps that we've gone through in this video. The strategies discussed in this video can apply to almost every save, but there are anomalies. In this video, we're going to touch on the three most common that I see all the time. These are situations where you have to make a backward save, no boost save, or your teammate is already back. Backward saves can be extremely tricky because you have to take into account your car being backwards. The easiest way to overcome this is to stop thinking about it as being backwards, but to think of it as simply jumping up for a normal aerial. An easy way to begin doing this is to start the save with a single or double jump and simply focus on that. You want to avoid touching your joystick when you do this because then you will put your car off kilter and because of the camera angle, it becomes even harder to correct it. To help with this, I've linked a training pack down in the description, so definitely check that out if you're interested. The next scenario is a no boost save. No boost saves are easily the hardest types of saves, but these are hopefully tips that will make them a little bit easier. The first is to challenge early. The reasoning behind this is because you are not going to be as fast as the opponents due to a lack of boost, so challenging early stops you from having to chase them and stops them from possibly launching an aerial attack on you as well. The second tip is to use the things discussed in the prevention section because these still work even without boost. The reality is that your opponent doesn't necessarily realize you don't have boost, so they still think that you can realistically challenge. So fake challenges still work even without boost. The last scenario is when your teammate is already back. The the simple answer to what to do in this situation is simply rotate behind your teammate. Even if it looks like your teammate can get scored on or you can go for the ball, reality is you shouldn't break rotation. Not only can this make it harder for your teammate, but it also increases the likelihood of you getting scored on because you might double commit with your teammate and that is the last thing you want to do with defense. So when you're faced with these awkward situations, keep in mind these tips that are provided in this video. So Moldy, what does this all mean? Well, this video is meant to be a guide for how to save the ball in Rocket League. This is meant to cover all the situations you might encounter, what you should do in order to save the ball, as well as how to approach a save in general. Every step discussed in this video is extremely important to whether the ball is saved or goes in the net, so don't underestimate any part of this video. Feel free to come back to this video and use it as a guideline for how to save the ball in Rocket League. Thanks for watching guys. If you liked the video, feel free to like and subscribe. We're on the road to a thousand subscribers, so the support would be much appreciated. See you in the next video.